So as a portrait shooter, it wasn't too often that I got a client or an opportunity to photograph um, subjects in motion. I've been driven by the portrait for many years and really never had a need for capturing motion. Um, I remember, I think, years and years ago when I had a flash that was on my camera, uh, like a speed light type of thing, and I remember you know, shooting that and maybe having some motion in there, and uh, it seemed to stop the motion fairly decent. At the time, I didn't understand that a flash, like a um, Canon speed light or a Nikon speed light, um, is uh, a thyristor driven technology. And what that means is, is as the light is discharged, there's like a bell curve that is, there's no light and it's discharged and then it comes back down and then it, and it shuts off. And with a thyristor um, technology, the light comes up, the power, I mean, starts to go off. And with the thyristor technology, you can actually cut that light in mid path. And so, and, and you can actually cut that light at the top of the bell curve. And so you get a faster flash duration based on that technology. Most of the power packs that we have today, the big strobes, are um, capacitor driven. And it, for the most part, that bell curve goes up and comes all the way down before it cuts off. And there's some technical information there that um, I don't even know about. But basically the concept is, is that if you have um, a thyristor driven flash, chances are you can uh, have a faster flash duration than you can with a capacitor pack. Now some of the manufacturers were able to get around that by building huge power packs and um, are able to uh, take and harness that and, and get some high speed uh, durations. I don't know much about that technology, but I do know that uh, if you want to uh, capture uh, a athlete in motion, you're going to need around a one five thousandths to maybe six thousandths of a second flash duration, somewhere around there. Uh, and when I first, I got a job, uh, I was shooting a campaign for Febreze, and I, from day one, talking to the art directors and the creative directors, I believed it was portrait, you know, it was a portrait driven kind of assignment with athletes and football and baseball and all the, some, some of the different sports. When I got there, the first thing they said is, uh, we're gonna have these guys flying through the scene. And um, at the time, I really didn't understand a lot about the flash duration, but the first thing I noticed is, even though I was in a studio, is that my images had a little bit of a ghosting effect that I could not get that crisp sharpness. And so at the time, um, I had to kind of work around that by actually shooting different components of the athlete and then later dropping them in. For example, I would shoot their face kind of like they're in, in the middle of a run and then I'd take that and drop it in and splice it in to make sure that they were completely um, tack sharp. So it was kind of a tough way to get around all that. But since that time, I've been able to uh, um, purchase a uh, flash uh, system made by Paul C. Buff that are the Einsteins and they are designed and they're capac or they're sorry they're they're thyristor driven packs I think the only packs in the world that are actually studio type strobes that are thyristor driven that allow you to get super high speed uh, flash durations and it's a great um, uh, way to be able to capture athletes in motion there are other manufacturers like Ellen Chrome and Profoto that build packs that are designed specifically for um, the uh, high-speed flash duration. So if you're going to, if you're going to get involved in the uh, you know, catching an athlete or someone through, jumping through the air, maybe in a dance, a scenario or whatever, keep in mind that you will have to get uh, some strobe equipment that will be able to do that and capture in high-speed duration. The picture I'm going to show you to, today we're looking at is um, uh, with, of the uh, ball up team which is the, um, it's kind of like a, it's a, a street ball league, which is sort of in between what would be pro, a pro, uh, the teams that we have today and maybe like the globe trotters. And they asked me to, to do a series of images of all their players, shoot them in studio with uh, a high speed 
uh, strobe action and then drop them in backgrounds that were urban kind of alleys and street scenes and whatever. And it was a great, a great um, uh, opportunity to do and test out that whole, uh, you know, high speed action stuff. One of the things that I love to do is photograph with a wide angle and most of those images that I shot of that team were shot, uh, that we did action jumping through the air, were shot with around a 24 millimeter on a full frame and I'm kind of looking up a little bit and, and really stretching the perspective a little bit with the, the feet and the arms and everything. So it kind of adds to a little bit of a drama in the final scene. So we're gonna take a look and we're gonna photograph. We're not gonna be able to do um, someone jumping like with a basketball through the air, but we're gonna get um, James Townsend to come in and we're gonna get him doing some, he's a trainer for the UFC um, boxing and, and um, mix, mixed martial arts and we'll get him moving and he'll be moving pretty quick. And so we're gonna to try to get the flash duration around one five thousandths of a second, somewhere in that area. All right, uh, here we are with James Townsend again, and we're gonna be doing, James was a former uh, NFL football player for the Bears, and now he teaches the uh, UFC fighting. And so I definitely have to be on his good side. I'm gonna be taken out here. But, uh, and you can see that uh, he's definitely in good shape. And so that's why I have a shirt on, so you guys don't see my six pack or one pack. And uh, today we're gonna have uh, James doing some kick, kick uh, action stuff. It's probably not as critical uh, as say if I had someone like a basketball player jumping through the air. But still, if you swing your hand at, at a full uh, motion, you, you need about a one six thousandths to catch that uh, hand in motion, or in, in frozen. So we're gonna do that right now. So Jane, let's get you in position. And uh, what we want is, uh, let's start with the, the, the kickboxing uh, uh, scenario. And I've got uh, my, my small uh, modifiers, the uh, Westcott, um, they're smallest boxes. They're about 18 by 24, somewhere around there. And I have the grids on there, which help minimize my flare on my lenses. And I have my beauty dish, again, overhead as my uh, sort of a circular uh, modifier. And you can use uh, a small umbrella or even a square octobox or a rectangle oct octobox as your overhead. Uh, the beauty dish works really good because it is a, as a, uh, uh, a circular uh, modifier, which we've talked about in the past, gives a, a catch light in the eye that's a circular um, reflection. Not that we're going to probably see that here. All right, so let's get James uh, in position. You actually go toward the background a little bit more, so I get a little more view. So I'm going to focus. I have set my ISO at uh, 400 uh, to increase my, my ISO speed a little bit. Normally I shoot at 100, but because I've downed the power on my strobes to get the highest speed uh, or higher speed duration, I need a little bit more punch uh, of, of uh, out of my camera in terms of sensitivity on the on the sensor. So I'm at 400, at 5.6, normally I shoot around 7.1 to f8, but I've pushed that a little bit, uh, so I think we're good to go. My shutter speed is at my sync speed, which is uh, 1 200th of a second. That's really not as important to know um, as, as um, if you're outdoor shooting, but it will uh, take out the ambient light, which is what I want. All right, so James, give me a good kick and let's see where we're at. All right, so what I look for is I'm looking for the edge light on his shoulders and the edge light from this light on his face. This light's filling in a little bit. And so I think it looks pretty good here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and see if I can catch that leg maybe bending just a little bit, not quite perfectly straight. All right, try again. So it's a little earlier. Let me try that again. I'm catching a little bit later than that. That's pretty good. So a lot of times what I do is I actually look uh, through, I don't look through the viewfinder, I'm looking through uh, past the uh, camera with my, my natural eye. And I can actually see the strobe light hitting him, knowing if I've got him in the position I want. Looking through the camera is a little harder because there's a shutter that closes down. So I'm actually gonna look through here and then look past it. Ready, go. And I can get a little bit better idea of where I want uh, uh, when I need to push that camera. 
Let's do one where you're doing maybe a knee drive or something and turn toward the camera a little bit more. I want to see your six pack a little bit more. Okay. Ready? Here we go. I love it. Ah, I love it. Now, I, I cut, I cut, I cropped your head just slightly. I don't want to do that. So let me go back here. And actually, take a step forward a little bit, right where I'm, I'm going to focus on you. Okay, now step back. I also want to make sure you're going to be right in focus. Ready? One, two, three. Beautiful. Do that again, and that maybe turn toward me just a little bit more. Okay, again, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, that is actually perfect. So I'm gonna raise my camera up just a little bit. I cropped your head a little too tight. One, two, three. And then now I lost your foot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back up just slightly. And I'm gonna focus again. Okay, ready? Here we go. Make sure I get everything I want in there. One, two, three. I love it. Now, is there a way you can do that where your hand, I mean, your, your hand's coming across your stomach? So I want to see, I want to see your abs on this shot. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. Oh, that blocked your face. Okay, so we got, they got there. Let's try it again. Get it. One, two, three. Yeah, it's still blocking your face. What if you brought that hand down? I know that might probably be a little awkward, but let's try it again. One, two, three. Yeah. Now, that, that hand's perfect, but I don't see this hand. So let's bring this hand up. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Yes. Yes. Oh, that is absolutely amazing. Okay, so now, I'm shooting a very wide lens. Uh, I'm at 24, okay? So the problem with the 24 is, well, the good thing about 24 is it builds a sort of a stretch perspective. Then when I set somebody in the background, which I normally do in my composites, and I have a wide angle background, it just fits naturally, okay? And so that's kind of my style, that's what I love to do. The, the downside to a 24 is that if he turns and brings a hand toward the lens, it's gonna be really uh, forced, um, elongated. So I have to watch that. Now, there's a few things I can do in Photoshop to maybe pull that back just a little bit to minimize it. Uh, but really, there's a point in which I have to say, you have to kick away from the camera uh, or maybe not extend as far. <clears throat> so I'm watching those things. So right now, let's try uh, maybe, James, to catch you a little bit before you explode, okay? So that same position, but maybe your, your, your legs back just a little bit, okay? So I can see if I can get now, do me a favor again. Step in position there. I'm gonna focus. Come forward a little bit more, right there. Let me make sure I'm focused. Okay, now step back and do your thing. Okay, so let's see if I can get you just a little bit earlier than I did before, ready? Whoops. Do it again, do it again. A little fast? Yeah, oh yeah, really, really fast. But I'm gonna see if I can catch it. All right, that looks pretty good. So maybe start a little bit earlier because I can get you in the white sweep here. You ready? One, two, three. Okay, that was a little too early. I'll try it again. One, two, three. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. So I've got your arm back, this arm's up, your six pack, your knee's driven. And uh, you know, it's a little elongated. That knee's just a little elongated, but I think we'll be fine. So let's do um, a full kick again away from the camera. Let's see what we can get here. All right. Now you bring that elbow down. Try to do that same thing before when you had your, uh, let me focus. Okay, when you had your, your left hand down. All right, I'm ready. One, two, three. There you go. That is amazing. Right there. Okay. So I think we've got it. Let's do, let's do one more like that. That little hand was a little bit bent back, but let's see if we can get it in the fist, the left hand. You ready? One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Okay, let me check my focus just so we have it. All right. All right, so there we have it. High speed action uh, sports scenario. The, as you, as you can see how I work there, the, the real critical thing is to the timing of, of getting your athlete in the right position. And, and for the most part, it takes me, 
a good 10 to 15 attempts of someone doing something, whether it's jumping through the air, basketball player, to kind of get a sense of where they're going to end up in the frame and the timing of things. So that takes a little bit of practice. So keep that in mind. It's, you know, just not the, even if I have, let's say I've done this before, it's still each athlete's a little bit different in their timing. So keep that in mind as you have an athlete that takes a little bit of practice. So really, um, if we were to maybe move those lights in a little bit, they would be a little bit softer, back them up a little bit harsher. Uh, they were back actually about probably eight to eight feet uh, away from our subject. So that's pretty about as far as I get them uh, from, from the uh, subject. So they're pretty edgy. So I could also take, if I wanted, and put a grid in just a regular head and throw a light maybe even say 15, 20 feet if I had to, if I had a scenario where I needed to throw a light further. So there you have it. Um, keep in mind that um, uh, this is, again, an experiment with every, every subject. So thank you, James, for helping us out today. And uh, again, you look good. Thanks. All right, so here's our homework assignment for those who want to try this. Um, if you don't have, say, a high speed, you know, big strobe packs, you can do this with a couple speed lights. And I would encourage that to sort of start off with, run your speed lights just straight, no modifiers. Uh, maybe the overhead you want to put a little bit of modifier, maybe a little umbrella. But, because uh, the speed lights don't throw a lot of power, so it takes a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, raising your ISO, and uh, the more modifiers you put on or the more material you put in front of a, a strobe, you're going to have a little less power. Special thanks to F.J. Westcott for keeping this episode lit up. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com. This week on Lit Up. So we're going to do a picture. I, I, I showed you the picture of Sizzle that I did, that rap artist. And basically, um, we've got a seven foot octo behind here that's creating just a white sweep or a white uh, background. I'm, I can actually add a little bit of spill around it if I want. And I've, what I've done is, by shooting a couple tests here, I ended up just powering it down until I started seeing a little bit of the wrinkles in the material. And then I just brought it back up about, about a half a stop or so. And then, for my uh, overhead light, I have a regular standard reflector with um, a 10 degree spot. Uh, grid in here. It's sort of covered up. You can't see it because it got tape on it. And then I, my, my actual slit is about a half inch. So uh, pretty simple. Not a huge investment to put this together. And the hardest part about this is lining up that slit so that it falls right down the face here. Head to framenetwork.com and create your passport login to gain exclusive access to Lit Up and your favorite shows. Only on Flix. Thank mm -hmm. you.